produces enough electricity to power a small light bulb. Now, think of the entire human population as small light bulbs. That's seven billion light bulbs. Imagine the brightness we can generate as one. And that's just a minor indication of how powerful our brains are. The human brain is simply astonishing. It has taken us from the depths of the ocean to the moon. It has taken us from the Renaissance to the Industrial Revolution to now, the technological era. I developed an interest in the brain, surprisingly, while I was watching a TV show, Grey's Anatomy. This interest further solidified into a fascination, following my grade 10 personal project, where I researched about the areas of the brain and its correlation with the five senses. Let me tell you, I was in awe with the beauty and complexity of this organ. I simply could not fathom how systematically harmonized it was. Now, I would like you all to simply think about how the brain functions, how it allows you to communicate, think, feel, and most importantly, imagine. Amazing, right? So our brain is like the modulating and commanding officer of all our parts. It's the big guy, which is ironic because of its actual size. The brain has four main parts, the cerebrum, cerebellum, limbic system, and the brain stem. The cerebrum is where um, several elements such as creative thought, problem solving, judgment, comprehension, visual and auditory functions, personality, language, internal stimuli, and so on are controlled. I'm sure just by hearing sensory cortex and motor cortex, you already have an idea of their functions. If not, then the sense of touch is received by the sensory cortex, and the motor cortex helps with maintaining and controlling body movement. The, the cerebellum, or the little brain, helps with balance, coordination, allowing humans to move properly, and to maintain their structure. Next, the limbic system. This is where hormonal and emotional responses are dealt with. And finally, the brainstem. This is where basic life functions such as heartbeat, blood pressure, and breathing are originated and maintained. Wow, that was a lot to remember. But basically, for centuries and centuries, scientists have been researching and continuously trying to understand human anatomy. Till, till today, the human brain remains the greatest mystery of all. But we have made incredible advances in understanding it. We know uh, it's made up of 100 billion nerve cells, connected like a bundle of wires. We know electric signals are sent down these wires, like messages. Um, and we have, we have given light to the blind and sound to the deaf by implanting electrodes, showing how damaged sensory receptors can be dodged by direct electrical stimulation of the nervous system. We have created new drugs for treating brain infections, inflammatory diseases, and brain tumors, and so on. But there are still significant missing links and gaps. We do not know how degenerative diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's are, are made. <laughs> we lack the link between the micro and macro parts of our brain. We do not know how information transfers from cell to cell, network to network. We are trying, we've been trying to understand how patterns of chemical and physical signals can lead to amazing things such as intelligence, consciousness, and creativity. But being humans, we have the abilities which many species lack. We have hopes and dreams of the future and memories of the past. We're fascinated with the future. For centuries and generations, we have written articles and books like Brave New World, 1984, made movies like I, Robot, Transcendence, Back to the Future, and so on. Technology has absolutely revolutionized everything we know. It has taken us to this new era where the future is completely unpredictable. We, as humans, we are really reliant on computers and technology. You barely, you barely leave your house without your phone. You have all your data backed up on your laptop, which you should back up <laughs> because I have lost hours of work. But um, we are amazed by the future. And there's a trend seen when predicting the future of the human brain, and that is the combination of technology and our mind. I'm sure you've all seen the Terminator, you know, Arnold's I'll be back. <laughs> but 
The Terminator is actually an artificial intelligence. There are three types of artificial intelligence. The first one is like Siri. If, how many of you have iPhones? It's okay, but like you all know what Siri is. It's like an artificial intelligence. And the first type of artificial intelligence specializes in one area. The second type of artificial intelligence is as smart as a human. It can, it can do intellectual tasks like a human can, and it has the ability to problem solve, make judgment, and so on. The third type of artificial intelligence, in my opinion, is the scariest, is artificial superintelligence. So like the Terminator. Artificial superintelligence is one that exceeds the intelligence of the human mind. It has the ability, it could probably have the ability to eradicate war, poverty, and diseases, but it could also be the worst thing ever to happen to humanity. See, there are two, there are two prominent futurists, Michio Kaku and Ray Kurzweil. Kaku sees an era where memories can be recorded and played back into someone else's head by stimulating the same pattern of neural activity. We already have fMRI machines, which are functional neuroimaging procedures using MRI, which is magnetic resonance imaging technology, to detect, to measure brain activity by detecting changes associated with blood flow. Kaku sees an era where machines are wired directly to the brain to read and transmit thoughts instantaneously. And this is likely to happen. In fact, the US DARPA agency is already working on this program called Restoring Active Memory, or RAM. This is involved with forming, this allows scientists to read and interpret memories and brain, acti brain activity involved in forming memories and recalling memories. This is like matrix style implants for humans to boost our memory. In, in fact, like 100 years ago, the question of microchips would have been non-existent. But now, more than 300,000 people actually have microchips. Patients with hearing loss have cochlear implants, which is basically electrically stimulating the auditory nerve. It's like a microchip. In fact, it is a microchip. And um, there are also other forms of microchips created by John Donoghue. BrainGate is a microchip which has a, a lot of needles and it gets inserted into the part of the brain controlling movement. From here, the brain signals, the brain signals recorded by the, the motor signals recorded by that area of the brain are decoded by an external computer which then sends those signals along to external robotic devices. It allows paralyzed patients to control devices with their thoughts. Just think about that. Now, Ray Kurzweil sees a future where, sees a very strange future where there's a combination of nanotechnology, biotechnology, and computer sciences, which could take humanity to its next stage of evolution. He says that by the end of this century, I don't think there will be a clear distinction between human and machine. Now, remember what I said about artificial superintelligence? Well, artificial superintelligence, there are scientists currently working on creating artificial superintelligence to exceed the human mind. But what they have in plan is to develop a kind of robot which helps us with our daily needs and satisfies us with that kind of stuff. But just think about this. If, there are, if a robot realizes that it is actually smarter than the human, would it not want to rebel against the human? Why, why should it continue listening to the human when it knows better, when it is smarter? Now, Stephen Hawking, Frank Wilczek, and Max Tegmark said they wrote an article in 2014 talking about how artificial intelligence could possibly be the greatest leap ever taken by humanity, but it could also be the last. He, they said that, yes, artificial intelligence would be amazing, like I said, in eradicating diseases, war, and poverty, but it could either take us to our next stage of evolution or extinction. Now, we as humans, we need to 
really consider the impacts and consequences of the actions that we are taking. Yes, a future with robots doing whatever we want, that's amazing, but it's scary. And the closer that future gets to becoming a reality, the scarier it becomes. We are trying to connect ourselves to computers in many ways, but could we possibly be pushing the limits of our abilities? Now, I want you all to look at the person sitting next to you, sitting behind you, sitting in front of you. We have, we are lucky. It is truly a privilege to have a normal, healthy brain. And we have the, it's it like, the thing about the brain, it's so amazing because it's a gift of nature. It's not created by ourselves, yet we take it for granted. The fact that we are aware of ourselves, our own morality, our, our trans desire of transcendence, our caliber to invent, create, to, to invent, to imagine, understand, to love and empathize, to create art, music, poetry, to have consciousness, intelligence, creativity, language, all of these things are beautifully beyond comprehension. And we should not take them for granted. To be alive is truly a wonder and pleasure. And, and our brain is a marvel that is all interconnected, all mysterious, all chemical and physical, and so much more. Thank you.